So I started off gaming probably when I was about, I don't know, I'd imagine I was probably about four or five, something like that. And my brother was given a ZX Spectrum. If you don't know what ZX Spectrum is, they just turned 30 years old actually the other day. They were a, a series of, of computers that were released by Sinclair in Britain. And the, the ZX Spectrum is to this day my favourite format. I don't care about you know, all the other ones. I mean, I love so many different formats, but ZX Spectrum is the one I, I hold dearest. And it, it was a computer that was successful in the UK. I think it was the successful, and there were clones of it in Russia, maybe a couple of other European countries. But for the most part, it, I don't think it was really successful in America. It was tape-based, so you had to load a game in. And to load a game in, it would take like 10, 15 minutes. It wouldn't always work. Sometimes it wouldn't work. Sometimes you'd even buy a game and you'd put the tape in and it just, for some reason, every time it just got to the point where it was 100% loaded, it would just, we used to always call it crash. It would just, like, crash. And that would be it. It wouldn't work anymore. The machine was pretty inferior to a lot of the stuff that was going around at the time that was competing against. It ended up competing against, like, the C64, which was technically, or technologically, much more superior. Anyway... That doesn't matter because what made the Spectrum brilliant is the fact that it was easy to program for. You had entire software companies built up out of like teenagers in their bedrooms because they were able to program and do everything for it and they would manage to get a publisher and release their games. I think it was just like, it was just sheer playability, that machine, you know. So many great games on them. I loved like the Dizzy series. If anyone's played that, I absolutely loved those games. Um, there were some other great uh, like ports and things like that, like Commando, Myth, History in the Making. This Spectrum port's amazing. R Type, and a lot of people, a lot of you might know what R Type is. Fantastic uh, shooter, but I think the Spectrum version is the best version of it, and it's also one of the hardest. It's really tough. I think that. What I loved about it is I, I grew up with like you know two of my best friends in uh, the street, one across the road and one down the road. They both had Spectrums as well and we just used to swap games all the time. You know, you would get a game, you'd play it and then there you go. My best memory, my best memory of the ZX Spectrum though is I think it was maybe, so it was a computer that lasted for years even though it was like, it was up against some of the 16-bit computers by that time, you know, and consoles like the Mega Drive and the SNES and all that were out, and it, they were still making games for this thing. Um, but, you know, I remember, I think I must have been about seven or eight, something like that, maybe nine, and Robocop was out. I got a phone call from a friend who uh, lived a little bit away, and he phoned me and he said, I just saw your dad. And I'm convinced he had a box underneath his arm and it was the Robocop game. And my dad went and got me it. And, he, and I was waiting. I, I didn't know if he really had it for me or not. It was a surprise. And he appeared and he had it. And it was just like... And this was when, like, gaming boxes were, like, proper. You know, you got... It was, like, in a big, big box. And you would open it up and there'd be loads of manuals and posters and things like that for the game. And I loved that game. It was fantastic. Loved the film as well. They're doing a reboot. We'll see. Um, so that was the ZX Spectrum. Then I moved on to the Sega Master System, which again I loved. I didn't have a lot of games for it though because the games were quite expensive. The first game I got with it was Chase HQ and the Chase HQ version on the Spectrum is amazing. But my brother persuaded me, he went with me the day that I went to get the Sega Master System we got it and I was allowed to choose one game from the shop to go with it. And my brother said, choose Chase HQ. He really persuaded me to choose Chase HQ and that was like when Homer gets Marge a bowling ball with his name on it, you know, like my brother loved Chase HQ, that's why I wanted but I got it. And the Chase HQ version of the Sega Master System just, it sucked, it really did. I would like to play it again to see if it is as bad as I remember it, but I remember that version was really bad. And there were two built-in games, there was uh, Safari Hunt, which was like a, a, a light gun game, it was a bit like Duck Hunt and uh, Super Hang On as well. Super Hang On was like a more big game, it was okay. There was a built-in game that, that was like sort of sort of secret on it, where like if you held down on the D-pad and pressed a couple of buttons, I can't remember exactly what you did, but this game would come up, it was like a maze game, it was a bit like Pac-Man. Um, and I had a game called Psycho Fox on that, 
fantastic platformer. You could choose loads of different uh, characters. But my favourite were the Wonder Boy games. The Wonder Boy games were amazing. And the Wonder Boy games were like Dragon Strap was the best one, um, and it was a platformer, but it had like RPG elements. You could like buy like different. Uh, suits of armor and swords and shields and stuff like that and you really felt like you were in a world and I just loved that, I thought it was amazing. Next door, my friend had a, a Nintendo entertainment system and I loved that as well. Although I was totally a Sega guy, I did love the NES, you know, like a lot of the games on like Castlevania, obviously Super Mario Brothers, um, Metroid, which I didn't play until later on actually. I remember playing Double Dragon 2 was the game I just remember hammering on, on the NES when I was a kid and then of course Super Mario Bros. 3 which is just amazing. I remember my friend gave me a loan of his NES and I just hammered that game, hammered it. I had the Atari ST which was a 16 bit computer and it was kind of up against the Commodore Amiga. Atari ST was a great machine, I loved it, absolutely loved it. The Amiga really looking back was again technologically it was a better system. But uh, Atari ST had some phenomenal games on it, like Elite, um, a Dungeon Master, Dungeon Master. I'm just, I realise I'm naming games here and you're probably bored, you've probably already switched off because you might not know some of these. Dungeon Master is one of the greatest games I've ever played and it was, um, it was like a first person role playing game and a uh, dungeon crawler and it took you weeks to complete, but it was so good. It was just fantastic, you know. You had like four characters, and uh, you had like to learn loads of spells, pick up loads of items, and go deeper and deeper and deeper into this dungeon. I never completed it, but uh, I think I came close, but I never quite got there with it. My my biggest regret, or the the most painful experience I had with any video game, was on the Atari ST, and it was there was a game called Elite which was a, a, a space trading simulator and you could do things like you, you could fight other ships, you could trade, you could go and buy stuff from one star system and then go to another star system and sell it uh, for a profit and stuff like that. And um, the sequel was coming out and it was called Frontier Elite 2 and I'd had the magazine, I had the magazine which had a full spread about it um, and I just, at this point the Atari ST was dying, right, it was dying, it was definitely on its way out. You couldn't really get Atari ST games in the shops that much anymore, so I had to like order them and eventually I persuaded my parents to order me a copy of this and I waited for weeks and weeks and weeks, I ordered it from like a magazine and eventually we just got a thing through just saying we've not got any more copies of it and we're not going to buy any of any in because like nobody's buying this. You know, so and I was just gutted, absolutely devastated. So I never got to play Frontier Elite 2 until years later. And it is a great game. It's a fantastic game. But the Atari ST, so many great memories. I loved uh, Another World was one of my favourite ones. And this was around about the time where I really got into like point and click games. I loved the Space Crusade game. Space Crusade? What am I talking about? Space Quest. I love the Space Quest games. Space Crusade was, there was a game Space Crusade or Space Hulk which was really good on the PC but anyway, there was a game called Leisure Suit Larry and we used to play it but it was like one that none of us were supposed to have, you know, because like it just, it was like really politically incorrect and it had like loads of sex in it but uh, and we used to like play it and uh, it was uh, great days, great days. <laughs> oh I had another heartbreaking experience on the ST which is I always remember sitting with my friend Gareth and we spent like a whole day playing this game called Future Wars which is a, was a point and click adventure game and there was two discs to it and we played through it and we got we got near the end of it but we had to change disc it said insert disc 2 and although I bought it it was legit the disc 2 was blank imagine that it was blank and we sat there for ages trying to get it to load it just wouldn't load you know oh Heartbreaking. Anyway, uh, but I did love that machine. Uh, so many fond memories of it. And then I made that mistake. I made I made a really big mistake 